Hello and thank you for watching another episode of Redbeard Shaves. Today I'm going to be showcasing Zingari Man the Explorer, which is citrus, woods, and vetiver. I whipped it up today with my keyhole shape. Whoop! I just dropped my brush. It is still good though. Keyhole shape, Luton Brushworks brush. Got lather all over the floor now. But lucky for me, I make lots of lather. I'm gonna mow down my growth today with my Carve Overlander. You know, my Overlanders have been uh, getting sidestepped a little bit. So I thought today would be a good day to use the Goatlander. I'm using a Wisimet Super Iridium Blade. And let's go ahead and wet the head and get this shave started. I'm going to clean up that lather mess later. Slipped right out of my hand. It's probably fortunate that that was a wood handle. If it was an acrylic, I might have broke it. I think that's the first time I've actually dropped a brush handle. Just slipped right out of the hands. It's going to work what I have in my bowl a little bit and get this going. All right. Hope you guys are all having a fine week. I've uh, probably got a little bit of butterfingers because I've been out. It has been a rough winter so far. I'm going to try to raise that up a little. Uh, with storms here at the homestead and we've been having just some unreal wind storms here and we're on a high wind warning it was supposed to end at one o'clock this afternoon but it's still howling out there i have been out most of the morning i noticed when i was taking my son to school that i had more trees down Oh, man, I hate losing trees. So I've been out cleaning up the property as much as I can. Try to keep on top of it. My ever-growing brush pile is going to be huge this spring because I wasn't able to get to it during the fall. We have pretty uh, strict burning rules here in Oregon and which is good because we're a, a green state meaning we're heavily wooded we're one of the larger states that you know has problems with forest fires and i definitely don't want to accidentally start a fire so we have pretty strict guidelines on when we can burn so there's like a, a line that I call that goes through the local fire department and it gives me all the regulations that have been put down by the state for the day and sometimes like your burning window is only two hours well I have a pile of deadfall that I cleared from this last summer that is taller than me and probably I mean, I'm going to say 50 to 70 feet around. I'm 6'2". The pile is probably close to 7 to 8 feet tall. So it's not something that will burn down within a couple of hours. I have to have a clear window for a full day of burning. So... I don't have to worry about trying to put out a raging monster. So at some point, when I had clear burning days, it was when I worked, of course. So, and I really have to dedicate a day to full burning. And really, I have to look kind of ahead, even into the next day, if I don't want to have to fuss with putting it out. Because it can get down to a point of smoldering coals, which is ideal because then 
I don't have a bunch of partially burned rubble. I like to burn it down as low as I can because it keeps the land underneath its integrity and it'll burn better for the next time that I end up burning. So I wasn't able to catch it in the fall. Uh, most of the time during the summer here, we're a no burn zone. And then in the spring, it's just kind of hit or miss. Maybe we'll get all these wind warnings gone this winter because usually in the spring is when I get some of these wind storms. So maybe I'll get them all done now and I'll be able to burn during the spring and build up the pile again for in the fall. But man, I got a lot of work ahead of me. A lot of work. There's uh, one spot on my property that I burn. It's just kind of where I keep everything and I load up all the deadfall and foliage that I get, get rid of over the summer and winter when I'm cleaning. Um, and where was I going with that? It's just, uh, it's full right now. Like typically I have a, I have a trailer that I pull behind the side by side and I fill that trailer up multiple times and the side-by-side -side bed and go and dump it off at the burn pile. But it's just a matter of going to where the stuff is. Sometimes, depending on where it's at on my property, I've got to move it to a location that I can load it up and then load it up and then unload it. So it's quite a bit of work sometimes touching the products three and even four times because I live on a hill. So sometimes I have to move it down to a lower section that gets me to a fence line, move it over the fence line so I can load it into a trailer and then unload it into the brush pile. So, and I'm gonna have, from what I've lost this winter, man, I'm probably gonna have to actually build a second burn site just to make it a little bit more efficient because I have had a lot of trees that I have fallen that were dead and then I have a bunch of trees that are marked because the previous owners didn't really keep up on the dead trees they just let them stand they didn't take care of any of the deadfall of dead trees fell. So most of the time, it was actually this, this last summer, which was our third summer here, is the first time that I've actually got into a point that I wasn't just pulling off previous deadfall. And I was actually able to fell some dead trees last winter. So it's all a work in progress. It's, it's going to come out and look gorgeous and give me a lot more workable land when it's all over. But these winter storms have just been killing me. But that's kind of part of the, the routine. You own property, you're up on a hill, you get high winds. We get a fair amount of rainfall here in Oregon, which usually... We're pretty wet. The last few winters have been dry, but we've had a significant amount of rainfall this winter, so maybe the cycle is kind of coming back through. So I have just been working like a dog all day, just trying to get stuff cleared up. The other side note is, is that I, uh, where my burn pile is, because I've gotten so much water, I wouldn't really be able to take stuff out and add to it at this point and without making a bunch of ruts and tearing up the pasture. So I kind of cleaned it up and let it lie 
to where I can get to a point of movement when the ground dries out. And it's just kind of a stages work in progress that way. I could definitely, without these winter windstorms, I could burn during the winter. But now I've had so much rainfall that I would have to add a lot of stuff to the pile. You know, diesel oil mix, diesel gasoline mix, in order for it to burn because it's so wet. And I really don't want to add a bunch of product or chemicals or fuel to the fire. I honestly don't like doing that. Um, so usually I get to a point, I have a huge, it's like a 15,000 or something rated BTU propane burner on a leash. And that's usually what I start my brush pile with. And I don't have to add anything to it in order to uh, get the fire going. And that's kind of the way that I prefer. Um, I try not to add anything that can leach into the soil and then into my watershed. Since I'm on a well, I try to maintain the purity of the water that I get as much as possible. So that's kind of my thinking on that. Makes it a little bit more delayed. I mean, I could go dump a whole bunch of diesel fuel mixed with gas, with some oil, and I would probably be able to burn down my pile that I have right now. I'm just not really willing to do that. So that was a glorious shave. I jibber jabbered through the whole thing. Do have the matching splash. I'm going to do the face shave off camera today. But this scent is amazing. It's a nice bright citrus forward scent, but the woods with a clean vetiver come through. It's not the grassy or dirty vetiver. It's just a nice, clean, cologne-like vetiver come through. Hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of Red Beard Shaves. Remember to do something kind for somebody. It doesn't cost anything and can make a world of difference. You all take care, and until next time, this is Red Beard out. Bye.